AMP has a superpower rarely talked about, its layout system, a system that once mastered gives you greater flexibility than standard HTML when laying out your pages. Here's how it works. First off, why does AMP even have its own way of laying out web components like images, videos, carousels on the web page? The main goal of the layout system is to ensure that AMP elements can express their layout before any remote resources are loaded, stuff like image assets and third-party JavaScript. This allows the AMP core library to statically lay out a page before any other survey requests are made, which in turn significantly reduces rendering and scrolling jank. So what's the layout system made of? The system relies on a set of attributes such as layout, width, height, sizes, and heights to tell AMP how an element should be laid out. Before I go into how to use these attributes, I'll walk you through the overall behavior of the system. Bear with me, this might sound a little convoluted, but it will definitely help you grasp AMP in the future. On page load, most AMP elements start at what we refer to as unresolved or unbuilt mode. In this mode, all of the element's children are hidden except for a dedicated placeholder you control. You can read more about placeholders in the design and layout section in our docs. Now, while the placeholder is visible, third-party resources required to display the element such as JavaScript, are still loading, but the AMP library already knows how to lay out the element, how much space it will take on the page, and what its aspect ratio will be. As soon as all requirements are fulfilled, AMP renders the complete element with all of its children and then hides the placeholder. Now, the element is sized and displayed based on the attributes I mentioned earlier, namely layout, width, height, and media attributes. The element will then have a defined size, which means that an element's size won't change anymore without any explicit user actions like scrolling or resizing the page. But now it's time to dig into the attributes. Width and height works just like you expect them from the normal HTML counterparts. Both expect an integer value in pixels. The big twist is that where standard HTML is a lot more lenient, allowing you to omit these, AMP requires them for most layout types. Now to the best part, the layout attribute. You'll see these sprinkled across all of our docs, so best to get familiar with the different ways of using them. Container is a simples value, but is also not very useful that often. The element lets its children define its size, much like a normal HTML divs. The component is assumed to not have specific layout itself, but only act as a container. Its children are rendered immediately. With fill, the element takes the space available to it, both width and height. In other words, the layout and size of a fill element matches its parent. Note that this only works for elements that are positioned, meaning have either position absolute or relative defined in the CSS. For fixed, the element has a fixed width and height with no responsiveness supported. The width and height attributes must be present. The only exceptions are the AMP pixel and AMP audio components. A variant of this is fixed height, where the element takes the space available to it but keeps the height unchanged. This layout works well for elements such as AMP carousel that involves content positioned horizontally. The height attribute must be present and the width attribute must not be present or must be equal to auto. Flex item makes an element take the parent container's remaining space when the parent is a flexible container via display flex. The width and height attributes are not required then. One that's hard to visualize is no display, as it literally does just that. It doesn't display. Useful for elements like AMP Lightbox that only shows on user action. Onto responsive, the likely most common layout type used in the white today. The element takes the space available to it and resets its height automatically to the aspect ratio given by the width and height attributes. This layout works very well for most AMP elements, including AMP image, AMP video, and so on. The available space depends on the parent element and can also be customized using the max width CSS property. The width and height attributes must be present. Intrinsic is a late addition that is a variation of responsive. On the surface, intrinsic looks very similar to responsive, with the twist that it respects the element's natural or intrinsic size and doesn't stretch beyond that. In other words, the element takes the space available to it and resets its height automatically to the aspect ratio given by the width and height attributes until it reaches the element's natural size or reaches a CSS constraint, for instance, max width. Beyond the basics of how to layout an element, there are a number of advanced features inspired by responsive images. The sizes attribute works similar to its normal HTML counterpart and helps the browser understand how wide the element will be to then select the right source image. The big twist is that AMP doesn't just tell the browser, this element will render at this size, but it will actually enforce it and apply the new size. Let's say you want the behavior of sizes, but for the height of an element. In standard HTML, you'd be out of luck, but not in AMP. The heights attribute is the perfect counterpart to the sizes attribute. Another fun attribute is the media attribute, which brings the power of media queries to HTML instead of CSS. 
This is especially useful to emulate something like the picture tag in AMP, where you're trying to do art direction and load two different images with different aspect ratios. With media in place, you can have two images next to each other and control them so none appears at the same time as the other. It's a nifty feature. And that was a quick overview of AMP's layout system. To dig deeper, I recommend heading to the design and layout section in AMP's developer documentation and reading through topics such as art direction, placeholders, fallbacks, and more. If you prefer to brute force your way into development, make sure not to subscribe to the channel. Good luck. Onwards.